far, most of what we've talked about has been about how the, in, the, the environment is changing. Um, that is what it's like to shop and be a consumer and how that inter how, how businesses interact and, and take advantage of that. There's the other side of it, which I alluded to earlier, but which we'll just dive in a little bit here, the last uh, 10 minutes or so, which is what is this telling them, that is the businesses about us as consumers? Digital media has the opportunity or creates the opportunity for companies to reach us, but also it has the it gives the opportunity for them to learn about and understand us because we we have behaviors that we do when we're online, we react in certain ways to certain things. And marketers use this media to and they you use information and because it's digitized, they can tell what we read, what we respond to, and what we don't respond to in ways that you could never do if you were just watching someone or giving them a survey or asking them things. People go through this media, they send a website, they send a widget like we were talking before, or you click on a QR code, they know who you are, they know what the QR code was that you clicked on, they know what store you're in when you did it because of the GPS, they gather all of this data about what each of us is doing and all of us are doing collectively within the marketplace. This is, um, when you think about it, it kind of is scary for individuals, but at the same time, it's, it's tremendously empowering if you think about the marketing orientation we talked about, where what you're trying to do is understand what people want, what their needs are, and then organize to serve them. Well, now you can understand what people's needs are without having to ask them when they might not even really know. You can tell by what they do and how they interact, how they use their media. You can tell what they want and what their needs are. And so you could provide that to them for purchase or for um, in, in some sort of a barter or business arrangement. Um, that's what you can, you, that's how marketers, organizations can see what the trends are in the marketplace, where those trends are, perhaps how they spread across the country, something starts in LA and moves west or moves east, starts in Chicago and moves east and west, what gets to the south, what doesn't get to the south, how those kinds of trends happen over time, um, how information is gathered, how people start to use information, what kinds of, of stories they're reading, who the celebrities, who the stars are that you can reference, which ones tend to cause buying behaviors and which ones don't. These are all things that we as individuals, as we take, as we do this uh, work or do this reading or whatever, we don't even realize what our preferences are so much. We just follow them. Well, the marketers now can begin to understand what each of our preferences are, what groups of preference, groups of us have preferences for, and what we all tend to have preferences for and how those change over time. You think about is this big data, as I mentioned. If you think about how how um, revolutionary that is, it's scary for each of us because we could easily be manipulated. But it also means that we're likely to get the kinds of products that we always wanted but didn't know were out there, and people will offer them to us in the way that we understand that we need them. Uh, as long as we maintain our choice and understand how things get, how we might be manipulated as consumers. This is all very positive. We worry too much about them knowing too much about each of us. That's a risk, of course. But all this information is gathered to gather data. You can also ask them specifically. You get these all the time about getting, giving feedback, seeing the Twitter and Facebook and MySpace, doing these sentiment analysis. It's, are things trending positive or things trending negative? You know, that's what they say about uh, on Twitter all the time what messages trend, which ones don't. One thing we know for sure is people like cat videos. Um, so you have these ways of doing this. Crowdsourcing is another thing. You have a question, is this gonna work? You ask a whole bunch of people through social media and you can get feedback very, very quickly. These are the ways to learn about consumers. Um, it's another area that you can think about is that people write reviews. 
Factory's whole site is based upon this. Angie's List and Yelp, where people write reviews about products or restaurants or whatever. And most, not most, um, this says 25% of employees or people, whenever they're deciding where to go or what to do, read these uh, customer reviews. Lots of them, you see them all the time, comments, reviews, whatever. Um, and then there's forums where you can talk about your products as well. And of course, all of these can be monitored and reviewed and digital analysis is done of the sentiment and what people are saying so that organizations can quickly respond to these kinds of issues as they arise. Things happen very quickly on the internet, so organizations have to respond very quickly on the internet. And once again, what that means is that organizations that don't have a strong social media marketing program where they understand what's happening out there are at a very, very great grave disadvantage to others. So those are the ideas about um, where what people learn, what organizations learn about us and what they don't learn, learn about us. Let me just make a couple of comments in closing about some of the issues and impacts that social media